Welcome to this week's edition of the OHSAA Football Playoff Preview Show. Now from Columbus, here's Marty Bannister. 711 high schools in Ohio began the football season back on July 31st. 448 of those schools made the playoffs in late October. And now just 14 are alive and have reached the final week of the season. This week's Ohio High School Athletic Association Football State Championships. We have reached week number 16 and the final edition of the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. I'm your host, Marty Bannister. Thank you so much for joining us for the next 30 minutes as we set the scene for this weekend's seven state championship games at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton. On Monday of this week, the OHSAA and the Pro Football Hall of Fame got together for a big announcement. So we'll go inside the Hall of Fame to recap this week's news. And then we'll hear from some of the broadcasters who will call the state championship games for Spectrum News 1, as well as for the Ohio High School Athletic Association radio network. But first, we'll step aside for these messages from the OHSAA. When we come back, we'll go inside the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Ready? It doesn't matter if you're playing hard or working hard. Your workout only works out if you recover right. Recover. Chocolate milk helps you recover for what comes next. It's delicious and contains the right mix of protein and carbs to help refuel exhausted muscles. Ready? Recover. Repeat. Chocolate Milk, the official beverage of high school sports, is brought to you by the American Dairy Association Mideast. We welcome you back to the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. I'm your host, Marty Bannister. We would first like to thank all of our show sponsors, including the OHSA Radio Network, which will broadcast all seven state football championship games this week at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton. Tickets are on sale at ohsaa.org slash tickets. Monday of this week, OHSA Executive Director Doug Ute was in Canton to speak to the Hall of Fame Luncheon Club, and he took that opportunity to make a special announcement that the OHSAA and the Pro Football Hall of Fame have reached agreement on a new three-year contract that will keep the state championship games in Canton at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium through the 2026 campaign. Here's a feature report from the Hall of Fame looking back at this Monday's announcement. We're here to announce today that uh, because of Mr. Porter and folks like Rich over at the Hall of Fame, uh, we're, we're coming back here uh, for an extended three years uh, with an option for a few more years. So I think that's great uh, that we can announce that today. And uh, we're, we're very excited to be here in Canton. And I get an opportunity to have a lot of discussions with uh, executive directors across the country, and we talk about where do you play uh, your state football at, where you play your state basketball. In Michigan, they play at Ford's Field. Uh, in, in Detroit and, and in Pennsylvania, they play at high schools. They don't go to big venues uh, anymore. And, and uh, I stick my chest out a little bit and say, we play at the Hall of Fame. We're the state with a Hall of Fame, and our kids get an opportunity to play in Canton, uh, where greatness is in football. And so we're so excited to be here. Uh, it's where we need to be, uh, not just because we talk a lot in our office where our 28 sports, where our state tournaments are held. And when you get to that level, we want our kids to have a wow factor when they get off the bus. And what I say about Canton is you have a wow factor on 77 just looking over at the facility, not just stepping off that bus. And so uh, we're excited to give our, our student athletes that opportunity. And uh, it's not just because of the physical facility. It's the folks at the hall and all those other entities over there that I can't ever keep straight. Uh, but, but really, it's uh, Jim Porter and his staff uh, making that commitment, and I even have to go on back to my conversations with Dave Baker uh, and Steve Strawbridge and, and that group <clears throat> to get us up here. Um, and so, uh, again, a big thank you to the hall. But most importantly, you know, we're bringing communities up here, and, and uh, you know, I, I always like to say they're going to eat in your restaurants and, and buy your gas and, and those type of things, and try to get in jerseys Thursday night. You better get there about <laughs> noon, I think, as you know. The Pro Football Hall of Fame, we have a four-pillar mission statement. Honor the greatest of the game, preserve its history, promote its values, celebrate excellence together. And I know with all the branded items in this audience, a lot of you know that. And the first two parts of that mission are actually pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy, right? Honor the greatest of the game, preserve its history. It's what we do as a museum, as the National Football Museum. 
Pillar four is pretty easy, celebrate excellence together. I mean, we're doing that right now. We're gonna celebrate the fact that Maslin's in the finals, Dalton's in the finals, uh, you know, all the other teams, all the other 12 teams coming here. It's that third pillar that gives us a challenge sometimes. How do you promote the values of the game? What, what are some of the best ways to promote what we think are the best elements of football? And we talk about that a lot at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We will forget the X's and we, we, we will forget the results of the games, the X's and O's, the good decisions, the bad decisions. Some of them live on in history for a really long time. Most of them fade away. But it's the lessons that the game teaches that stay with us all of our lives. So at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we're actually undertaking several initiatives around high school football. And it's because of this gentleman. Not you. <laughs> it's because of Doug Ute and what we know he represents as commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association that we are extremely confident that these initiatives that we have in mind to promote the values of the game are really going to take off here in the years to come. And Doug, neither Doug nor I can, can go too deep into what some of those ideas are because it's, it's very new, and, and, but we are going to bring together some of the deepest thinkers around high school sports and around high school football to help promote the values of the game. And I think you're gonna see that really pay off in a big way. So we are blessed in Stark County to have the seven championship games here. We have had them for several years. Hope we can keep them for several more. Because of what it does, it brings kids playing high school football to the birthplace of the National Football League where we get the opportunity as the Pro Football Hall of Fame to share those values. We're, we're just thrilled uh, with the opportunity to, to have our student athletes get an opportunity to come to the Hall of Fame and play in a big time venue and, and really get a sense of the history of football. I mean, this, this is perfect for a state championship in terms of you get an opportunity to play in a state championship football game, plus exposed to the history of football. And I just think that's a win-win, it's, it's awesome. The NFL considers Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium as its 33rd venue and you know kids to experience a, an NFL quality field surface, lighting surface, uh, stands, press box, concession area, everything uh, to meet those NFL standards. Uh, you know what percentage of the kids playing this weekend will ever experience an NFL game again. Maybe maybe one or two of these kids has a pro career in front of them but for many uh, won't even have a college career in front of them. This is you know, for many kids, seniors, their last game uh, that they'll put on pads and play competitive football. So we want to make that experience something that'll last a lifetime for them. You know, win or lose. Listen, we're going to we're going to crown seven state champions, and and there'll be big smiles on their faces, and there's going to be a lot of sadness in seven <coughs> locker rooms this weekend. But when they get a chance to peel that back, you know, a few days later, a few months later, or 20 years later, when they're at a high school reunion talking with their friends, they're going to say, you know what? We got to play in that state championship game in Benson Stadium, and wasn't that a thrill? And, and we came this close to winning the game, but, but you know, to be able to hang their heads high and have stories they can tell the rest of their life is something that we're happy to be a part of. You know, we talk about that uh, wow factor when you step off the bus. Canton, Tom Benson Stadium, Hall of Fame, gives us that wow factor before you even get off 77. That is a beautiful sight our kids get to see. Well, we think it's a perfect space because it's not about coming in and just playing a game. It's about getting off that bus, seeing the Hall of Fame, understanding what makes the game special, experiencing that game, and then experiencing the warmth of the community itself, which, which embraces these kids and, and their communities coming in. It's, it's more than just that two to three hour window of the game, it's that entire experience. Again, a big shout out, not only to the folks at the Hall of Fame, but the community uh, to start counting, not just the Kent community. And, and uh, the Visitors uh, Bureau here in, in town that's uh, Visit Canton uh, that has been so instrumental in, in getting us here and keeping us here and making sure our needs are met. And so we, we have a big thank you to Jim Porter and the staff at the Hall of Fame and, and uh, the folks at Visit Canton and, and uh, the mayor and everybody else here that, that makes this happen. Our thanks to the Pro Football Hall of Fame for producing that segment for this week's show. When we come back, we'll hear from some of the broadcasters who will be calling the state championship games this weekend. This is the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show.
The year was 1907. The Cubs won the World Series and the Ford Model R hit the assembly line. While here in Ohio, school administrators came together to form the Ohio High School Athletic Association. One thing that hasn't changed since 1907 is the dedication of the OHSAA to education-based athletics in Ohio. School sports teach responsibility, sportsmanship, and life lessons that stay with students long after their playing days are over. The OHSAA seeks to prepare students not for the next level of sport, but for the next level of life. We welcome you back to this week's edition of the OHSA Football Playoff Preview Show. This weekend's state championship games will be televised live by Spectrum News 1 and also broadcast by the OHSA Radio Network. Time now to go to the broadcasters who will call the games to get previews of each of the state title matchups. We'll get things started on Thursday night with the Division II game that features Maslin Washington undefeated and top ranked in the state in Division II and Akron Archbishop Hoban. I'll have the pleasure of calling that game on the OHSA Radio Network. The Maslin Tigers returned to the state finals for the first time since three straight runner-up finishes in Division II from 2018 to 2020. In the playoffs for the 30th time in program history, the Tigers have had more than half of those trips, 16 of those, end up with at least an appearance in the state semifinals. Maslin, in the midst of a remarkable extended run of postseason success under head coach Nate Moore, who last year passed Paul Brown as the program's all-time winningest coach. Since 2017, Maslin's only 24-1 in regional games under Moore, winning those games by an average of 26 points. That's helped push their all-time playoff record to 56-29. and What's eluded the Tigers, though, is a state championship. They've yet to win a championship in the OHSAA playoff era, finishing as a runner-up six times. Maslin arrives at the Division II state final with a perfect 15-0 record and ranked number one in the state in Division II. They've outscored their opposition 611-114 to this year. In the playoffs, they have yet to allow more than seven points in any of their five games, outscoring teams 212 to 32. Further example of their dominance, Maslin has 52 rushing touchdowns this season, while yielding just two opponents rushing touchdowns. Their defense is nearly averaging as many tackles for loss per game as they give up points per game, seven and a half tackles per game, seven and a half points per outing. The Tigers get it done by shutting down the run game as well, too. Opponents get just 33 yards per game on the ground. For Akron Archbishop Hoban, head coach Tim Terrell has a 129 and 21 record in his 11 years at Akron Archbishop Hoban. Combined with his 11 seasons at St. Thomas Aquinas and in Florida, he's won 194 games. This is Hoban's eighth state title appearance in nine seasons. The Knights have won five state championships and finished runner-up twice as a program. This will be the third OHSAA state finalist that Hoban has played this season. The Knights beat Division IV representative Cleveland Glenville 28-16 on October the 4th, but lost 14-7 to Division I defending champion Lakewood St. Edward on October 20th. They also knocked off Kentucky State champion Frederick Douglass 45-6 on August the 19th and two-time Virginia State champion Trinity Episcopal School 34-6 on September the 2nd. This will be the fifth time in six seasons that Hoban and Maslin have played each other in the playoffs. The Knights hold Division II state title wins over the Tigers in 2020, 35 to 6, and in 2018, beating Maslin 42 to 28. The championship game is a rematch of last season's state semifinal that Hoban won 41 to 20. The only time the Knights didn't reach the final in the last nine seasons was in 2019, when, oh by the way, Maslin beat them 17-14 in the Division II Region 5 final. The Knights are loaded with Division I recruits. William Satterwhite's headed to Tennessee. Jordan Pritchard Sewell is going to Holy Cross. Eli Lee to Ohio State, Ricky Williams to West Virginia, Devin Bell to Miami of Ohio, Caleb Schlater to Miami, Tyson Campbell to Central Michigan, and Javon Lindsay to Wofford. The Knights are loaded with talent. Should be a great game, the Division II State Championship. On Friday morning, the Division VI game will kick off at 10.30 with Versailles from the always powerful Midwest Athletic Conference taking on perennial state champion Kirtland. Brendan Gulick will have the call of that game for you on Spectrum News 1. Thanks, Marty. Our Division VI state championship game this year is a rematch from the Division V game just a couple seasons ago. A couple powerhouse programs colliding Friday morning. The Kirtland Hornets and the Versailles Tigers try to take home another crown. No program in Ohio high school football right now has consistently achieved quite as high as Tiger Liberty's Kirtland Hornets. Not Archbishop Hoban, not Massillon, not St. Ed's. Kirtland is on a run right now that's rarely been matched. The Hornets are playing in their seventh consecutive state championship game and their 12th in their last 13 years. Only three other schools in OHSAA history have played for the state championship 
more years consecutively. Now that said, Kirtland was the runner up in each of the last two tries. They have not won it since they pulled off a three-peat 2018, 19, and 20. So just how good is this Kirtland team this year? Well, they're 14 and one with seven shutout wins. <laughs> that lone defeat came against unbeaten Perry, who, by the way, is playing in the Division Five championship game on Saturday afternoon. Hornets' resume includes four consecutive shutouts in September. They outscored their opposition 193 to nothing in that four-game stretch. But perhaps a bit more impressive is the fact they won their both regional final and state semifinal in shutout fashion. Last week, completely overwhelmed a terrific Garraway Pirates team, 17 to nothing. Garraway averaged 40 points and 400 yards of total offense per game, and they had never been held under 28 points this year. Kirtland held them to 55 yards of total offense, obviously scoreless, and negative three yards of offense in the second half. A win for Kirtland would hand them a seventh state championship in 12 tries. As it turns out, the Midwest Athletic Conference has been Kirtland's only kryptonite the last 10 years. All five of their state championship losses have come to MAC schools, including for sales in 2021. And this year's Tigers team certainly looks like the real deal. Much like Kirtland Versailles, a program steeped with tradition. They've won seven state championships in all, but just two since the turn of the century. Tigers made the playoffs for the record 22nd time. They have a 60 and 14 all time postseason mark. Versailles opened the year with three straight shutout wins, stumbling only twice along the way to Marion Local and to Coldwater. Flyers are playing Dalton in the D7 title game on Saturday morning. And if either of those two schools win this weekend, Marion Local or Versailles, it'll be the 26th state football championship for a MAC school in the last 30 seasons. Stylistically, going to look a lot like Kirtland. They run the ball quite well, led by wide receiver turned quarterback Michael Osborne and tailback Joel Garrett, Ross Francis, Lane Bergman, and Joe Watron have been really good this year too. Tigers come in with a bunch of momentum. They outrushed Columbus Grove 279 to 102 in last week's 30 to 13 win in the semifinals. They scored on all but two of their possessions. They never punted in their 10th consecutive state semifinal win. Kirtland and Versailles, the 2023 Division VI state championship set for Friday morning at 1030 Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton. If you can't join us live, Mike Robinson and I will have the call for you live on Spectrum News 1. The game will also be broadcast on the OHSAA radio network. For the Ohio High School Football Preview Show, I'm Brendan Gulick. On Friday afternoon, Toledo Central Catholic and Columbus Bishop Watterson meet in the Division III Championship game. That one will kick at 3 o'clock. You'll have the unique pleasure of listening to Todd Bell call that game on Spectrum News 1. Friday afternoon, Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium, the Division III State Championship game. What a game we'll have this year. Toledo Central Catholic at 15-0, Bishop Watterson out of Columbus, 14-1. Now, Bishop Watterson. They had won the first nine games of their season. They lost the last game of the regular season to their rival, St. Francis de Sales, on a last-second field goal that did them in. It blemished their unbeaten year, but they have steamrolled their way through this postseason. Their quarterback is a senior, A.J. Mechanich, on the season has thrown for 3,200 yards, 38 touchdowns on the year. Junior Jake Ulenake, wide receiver, he is his top target. Ulenake on the year has just over 1,000 yards receiving, and he has 13 scores. Now, on the ground, Zach Weber leads them in rushing, 800 yards, 13 touchdowns. But Ben Ulenake, a freshman, he has over 500 yards on the season and five scores. He's really come on for them in the back half of the season. This defense gives up nine points per game. They are anchored by a Mr. Football finalist in linebacker Dominic Purcell. Now, the senior is a Naval Academy commit. He has 181 tackles on the season, 40 tackles for loss, five interceptions, and he's returned two of those touchdown interceptions for touchdowns. Keep your eye on number six on defense. 
Now, what he'll be up against today for Toledo Central Catholic is a team that's won 30 consecutive games. They lost their first game in 2022. They won the D2 State Championship last year over Akron Hoban. They haven't lost this season, and they're ready to go for Friday's State Championship game. They are led by two 1,000-yard running backs on the season. Marquan Braswell has 1,800 yards on the ground, 29 touchdowns, and he is also joined by a 1,000-yard rusher in Tyler Morgan. He has 25 touchdowns on the season. Now, they can also throw it. 1,800 yards this year out of their quarterback, Tyler Collins. 15 touchdowns, and nine of those touchdowns have been caught by Jalen Watson, and he has just over 1,000 yards receiving on the season. Defensively, giving up 10 points per game. They also have been stout here in the playoffs, and for them, their studs are on the outside defensive ends. They've got two seniors, Michael Cannings and Ronald Collins. Cannings has 25 tackles for loss, eight sacks, and Collins this year has 18 tackles for loss, four sacks, four forced fumbles on the season. So a great matchup offensively and defensively against two teams who are combined 29-1. and one. The Division Three State Championship game from Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium will kick off 3 p.m. on Friday. The Division One Championship game will cap things off on Friday at 7.30. David Bacon will have the call as Lakewood St. Edward and Springfield meet for the third consecutive season. Lakewood St. Ed, the two-time defending champion. Thanks, Marty. Already some history made in the Division I state championship game for the first time ever. Same two schools will play for the big school state title for the third consecutive year. St. Ed's doing battle with Springfield. Eagles have won the first two of those. Um, when you look at on the field, uh, St. Ed's offensive line is huge. They average 6'5", 299 pounds. Talk about the left side. The Armstrong twins, they're both committed to Ohio State. Right tackle Ben Robeck goes 6'8", 324. He's going to Michigan. Behind that line, a sophomore who is running wild in the playoffs. Brandon White has run for over 240 yards and three touchdowns in each of the regional final and state semifinal game. He has 20 touchdowns on the year. Defensively, the Eagles linebackers are a little underrated. They're really good. John Slaper, Nate Gregory, they'll come up and play in the run. They'll tackle sideline to sideline. They can also drop into coverage in our problems. When you talk about the Springfield Wildcats, 12th seed in Region 2, highest seed to ever make it to a state championship game. They started out the year 3-5. and five. They've ripped off seven straight wins. Uh, and really leading the way for them during that playoff run has been Javen Norman, talented running back, getting the tough yards. Also, uh, their quarterback, Brent Upshaw, has made some critical throws. You sprinkle in Aaron Scott, one of the best defensive backs, not only in the state but in the country. He's run the Wildcat and come up big in some big moments running that Wildcat offense. Defensively, Springfield allowing under 17 a game. They know what they're getting into. They have faced the Eagles the last two seasons, so that defense well aware of what St. Ed's offense brings to the table. Tom Lombardo, uh, St. Ed's head coach, has a chance to join OHSAA royalty. If the Eagles, under Lombardo, can win the third straight state title in Division I, he will join Chuck Kyle of St. Ignatius and Jerry Faust of Moeller. Those are the only two coaches so far who have won three state state championships in Division I. Marty? On Saturday morning, the Division 7 title game will feature Marion Local and Dalton. Chris Solwecki will have the call of that game for you on the OHSA Radio Network. Thanks very much, Marty. Saturday morning at 10.30, the fifth state championship of the weekend will be played. It's a Division 7 showdown between defending state champions and 15-0 Maria Stein Marion Local's Flyers. They won their state semifinal matchup with Hamler Patrick Henry 42 to nothing. The Flyers led 28 to nothing at the half, scored all 42 points prior to the start of the fourth quarter. Their running game accounted for most of their 240 yards of total offense, and kicker Carson Bills, perfect, 6 for 6 in PATs. The Flyers are 13 times state champions all since the year 2000. They've been to the state championship game every year since 2011, save 2020, when the COVID canceled the championship. In those 11 appearances prior to this season, they were runners-up only twice while being crowned state champions nine times in 11 years. On the other side of that Division Seven matchup, it's a team that's never been here before. The Dalton Bulldogs are 14-1, and one, their only loss of the season coming in Week 1 against last year's state runners-up, Kirtland. 
This is the Bulldogs' fifth straight playoff appearance, and they've been there all told 16 times. They defeated Caldwell last week in their state semifinal matchup, 55 to 7. They were up 21 to nothing after the first quarter and went into the locker room up 42 to nothing. Sammy Tomlinson rushed only seven times for Dalton, but those seven rushes were good for 75 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback Colin Pearson was 9 of 10 for 190 yards and two touchdowns. He also rushed for 47 yards on two attempts and another score. It's going to be an incredible weekend at Tom Benson Stadium in Canton, Ohio. We hope you'll choose to join us for the OHSAA Playoff Preview Show. I'm Chris Solecki. The Saturday afternoon title game will be in Division 5 when Perry takes on Liberty Center. Tim Bray has the action for you on Spectrum News 1. Five undefeated teams will play for state championships in Canton this weekend, but only in Division 5 they'll play each other, both teams at 15-0. Perry out of northeastern Ohio and Lake County against Liberty Center out of Henry County in northwestern Ohio. Both teams have been at the top of the Division 5 polls all season long. And both teams have history with last year's champion, South Range. The Raiders eliminated both teams en route to their championship last year, but Perry turned the tide on the Raiders this year in the regional final. Liberty Center, 46 points a game. They are really strong offensively, but it's their defense that has propelled them to the finals. It was a strip sack in the end zone for a touchdown, which was the difference of the ballgame against Valley View as it was 14-10 to 10 in the final. Perry, on the other hand, boy, the Pirates have just sailed all the way through the uh, tournament so far, and their closest game was in the semifinals against Harvest Prep, 22-8. Perry has never won a state championship, and Liberty Center hasn't won since 1997. The final step is a big step, and the trophy awaits the winner. And things wrap up on Saturday night with the Division IV Championship game when Cleveland Glenville takes on Kettering Archbishop Alter at 7.30. David Wilson will have the call of the final game of the high school football season on the OHSAA radio network. A couple of 12-3 and three teams will square off in the Division IV State Championship game on Saturday night in Canton. Kettering Archbishop Alter, a two-time state championship program back in 2008 and 2009, will take on the Glenville Tarblooders who last season picked up their school's first football state championship with a 26-6 victory over Cincinnati, Wyoming. Alter soundly defeated Steubenville 48 to nothing last week in their state semifinal. Sophomore running back Noah Jones scored three touchdowns in that game and has amassed over 1,100 rushing yards this season. Interesting to note that Alter began the playoffs as the number four seed in Region 16, but they have now run off seven consecutive victories. Meanwhile, Glenville whipped previously unbeaten Canton South 42 to 21 in their state semifinal, also their seventh consecutive victory. Mr. Football candidate Deshante Jones delivered a Herculean effort in that game with 256 yards rushing and three touchdowns. So far this season, Jones has over 1,900 yards rushing and 27 TDs. The Tarb Letters and the Knights will kick off Saturday night to cap championship weekend at 7.30 p.m. Reporting for the Ohio High School Football Preview Show, this is David Wilson. That will do it for this week's state championship game previews. Let's step aside for a few minutes and a few messages from the OHSAA. And when we come back, we'll wrap up this edition of the OHSAA Football Playoff Preview Show. Here, 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 even here, never here. Phones down, it's the law. Fines start at $150. Here, 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 here. even here, never here. Phones down, it's the law. Fines start at $150. Before we wrap up this week's show, a reminder that all seven state championship games will be televised live by Spectrum News 1, with streaming available at OHSAA.TV, and of course the radio call on the OHSAA radio network. Single game tickets are still available at OHSAA.org slash tickets, and that includes a special ticket package with indoor access in the stadium club during and after every game. We would like to thank all of our guests, content contributors, sponsors, and production staff during these six weeks of the playoffs, and we thank you 
for allowing us to bring it to you all here each week as we cover the high school football playoffs throughout the great state of Ohio. We hope to see you this weekend in Canton for the seven state championship games. On behalf of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, I'm Marty Bannister. Facilities and production, assistance provided by Yamo Media and Adam Dell. The OHSAA Football Playoff Preview Show has been a production of the OHSAA Radio Network. Thank <laughs> you.